make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad techniques hi darren from mrt here in this very very short video i'll be showing you how to use liquid polyurethane to make resin castings some people may say this is putting the cart before the horse however i just wanted to show you what sort of results you can get before going out and spending all this money on the rubber mold material and then the polyurethane. So without further ado, let's get started. So the product I'm using here is a liquid polyurethane. So the brand is a Smoothcast 310. So it comes in two parts, an A and a B, that have to be divided 50-50 and then mixed thoroughly. That then goes off, hardens and forms the polyurethane. So you can see there, I've got the two cups, I evenly distribute the A and the B into each of the cups, mix it thoroughly, and then start to slowly pour it into the mold. So you've got about three minutes of working time with it, so you need to work reasonably quickly. So there's one of the, the molds that I use there. So that is made out of a liquid silicon rubber made by the same company. So as you can see, I'll go through another video at another stage how I go about making those. But um, So that's pretty well the, the negative or the blank of the silicon mold so these ones are quite deep so you do go through a fair bit of silicon so i'd probably advise against that unless you want something very specific so there you can see the two cups there obviously first of all ppe is very important with this stuff you definitely don't want to get this on your hands and mix it in a open space with plenty of ventilation so it's just a matter of grabbing the, the a and the b mixture it's very hard to get them mixed up one's yellow bottle one's a blue bottle and I normally just go 50-50 of each and I just do it by sight. So that's normally enough for me. You get it within a few mils and that's normally uh, good enough. But at this point in time, once you open up the bottles, you've got as much, as much time as you need. It's when you mix them together and start mixing the two compounds, the A and B together, is when your three minutes starts ticking over. And I've found in warmer weather, like it is here in Australia right now, uh, the compound does start going off reasonably quickly so there we go so the compound is pretty well 50 50 at that point in time so it's just a matter of which one you want to put in what cup first doesn't matter so just uh, get a some sort of disposable stirrer ready i just use a, a coffee stick and you pour it in and start mixing uh, you don't have to mix it for all that long because as i said you don't have a lot of time for this to go off so just start folding it through reasonably quickly and it's probably worthwhile to, to note that get everything ready, i.e. the moulds and anything else ready to go because once that stuff needs to start being poured, you need to act reasonably quick. All right, so we are ready to go. So it's just a matter of pouring it into each of the moulds. So you can sort of see, you just get a little drip going. Now, it does have some bubbles in it, but as it starts to warm up the mixture, the bubbles will start rising to the top so there's obviously some more professional ways of doing it out there where you do reverse pressure and all sorts which brings all the all the air bubbles out but for, for the hobbyist like myself and most people out there this is more than adequate so you can see I'm going when I'm pouring it in going just below the line of the lip there so what it does it does obviously expand a little bit so the more it hangs over the top the more you get a file and sand off which is uh, quite often a pain in the bum so um so these obviously little ones are gonna be very very careful now you can sort of see the mold is starting to go cloudy white so that's it starting to go off and solidify so also that cup is getting quite warm there so hence why it's still a good idea to have your ppe with your your glasses on which i've got on and my um, rubber gloves so the next step, what I do here, I just grab a, another coffee stirrer. You can see some of them sort of going over the top and then I just scrape the top. So just leave it on the mold there because you want to leave the mold level at this point in time and you can always just scrape that excess off the top of your mold at a later stage, but it just prevents a lot of cleanup. So you can see the, the molds are starting to go white, as I said, as it's solidifying. You can see the mold on the left hand side it's a little bit bubbly the reason why that is is because i put it in the mold when it was probably too far gone but i sort of didn't want to waste it so that will require a little bit of uh, tidy up so now it's just a matter of waiting about 10 or 15 minutes and letting those molds totally solidify now don't do what i've done before and get a little bit eager and about after five or seven minutes where it feels firm enough to take them out 
because they're still warm at that point in time and any little detail will actually bend and sometimes snap off. So the moral of the story is just be patient at this point in time, waiting the extra few minutes is worthy and worthwhile. So see the other side when they're all solidified and nice and hard. So at this point it's just a matter of checking that the, the, the top of them are reasonably cool and then just turning the mould upside down and just push lightly on the, on the bottom of the mould and they should just slip out reasonably easily as indicating there. So these ones with the more uh, detail parts like that one there particularly might pay to just make sure that you sort of ease it out because you can actually rip the mould at this point in time. Now the resin has cured, I'll show you what some of these look like. So you can sort of see there, that's a line size relay box. So a little bit of work along the bottom there where it sort of bubbled up just a little bit, but that's just a over flashing. You can see it still sort of holds a reasonable amount of detail there. So you can make some quite reasonable looking items here. So that one there's a little line side uh, telephone box now you can see the little chip at the front there I actually dropped that one on the ground so that was my fault so but as you can see it's quite a, quite a reasonable bit of detail now that molds probably starting to wear a little bit because it's getting a few nicks and all that in it but uh, I'll still continue to use it at this point in time so there there's the next one now that just looks like a bunch of plastic but that's actually like a machine on a skid or a pallet that sits under a tarpaulin so there's a little bit of a tidy up to do on that as all of these are and they're not definitely not perfect particularly on the top side of it so that one I have now given it the undercoat just to show you um, a little bit more about what they look like when they're, they're colored up so that one there is obviously a, a, f um, a crate a packing crate so just to be mindful the bottom of the crate is obviously got no detail on it so that can obviously sit on a wagon or the like and I've also done piles of wood um, I just quickly sprayed that one it would need a little bit more spray but that's uh, come up quite nicely that that sits on a wagon on, on mine on my layout that is and these are some of the bigger ones so that bottom bit obviously I put way too much polyurethane in that so a matter of cutting that off but you can sort of see it gives a reasonable amount of detail the seams still show there um, that obviously needs a bit more undercoat but uh, gives you some sort of idea the the, the type of detail we get now this one surprisingly came up really well you can sort of see see where I'm pointing there with those tweezers now it's probably not a great one to try to replicate purely because the urethane or sorry the rub, liquid rubber when you make the mold will sit around that shaft there so when you put your polyurethane in there it actually breaks the mold so it actually pulls it apart but it seems to be working okay and holding together it's a little bit of a tidy up on one of those shafts there but um, I'm quite happy with the way they are definitely coming up um, there's one of the crates I have just initially colored up um, I've got to do, add some weathering add uh, packing slips and all that on those little uh, rectangles there but I'm quite happy the way these are coming up and obviously they are a lot cheaper than going out and buying a myriad of them so there's uh, that little skid that I showed you before uh, where I've started just painting up the, the machinery around the neath and also the the tarpaulin that sits over the top of it so I'm quite happy definitely with that one so at this point in time that's uh, the end of this video um, as you can see I've shown you what the sort of effects you can get from these items so i think in the next video i'll show you actually how i make the rubber mold so thank you very much for watching make sure you comment below see what you think and see you next time make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad technique